Everybody, welcome to another episode of Fruitless Pursuits. We really appreciate you joining us. Thank you to everybody who has recently subscribed. We certainly appreciate that. It's Absolutely, help us grow this very, very modest channel uh, in a super organic way, and allowed us to like continue to do kind of what we want to do, and not chase algorithm trends and like Absolutely. you know do the corny fucking. You know, weird faces <laughs> on our thumbnails and shit like that. So we do appreciate you checking us out. So today we're talking about uh, we're kind of circling back on a video that we did well over a year ago at this point uh, about the Vicky Cornell versus Soundgarden lawsuit. Um, it seems that this is coming to a close finally. Yeah, it's awesome. It's it's great. I mean, um, best everybody wins, and I think even if it's the money that wins, right? I think we win as fans because what's happening is they're agreeing that these songs. I think we we're hearing, hearing numbers like seven that there's the, these songs that were in this demo format that Soundgarden had been working on um, that we must have master tracks of, of Chris's vocals to be working from, uh, so that we'll we'll eventually hear this in some um, finished format. The only thing that concerns me, Jason, is that they're not going to be that good. You know, I think I think <laughs> well, in, in a lot of instances we've we've seen, you know, the Beatles managed to pull off some amazing songs, um, but they had, you know, it's the Beatles, right? Yeah. Soundgarden's last couple of records haven't really been, you know, their masterpieces. Um, no. So I mean, King Animal was good, but it it doesn't hang up there with Bad Motor Finger and super unknown and some of the you know some of the more popular ones for sure sure or even um, like louder than love or something like that which was yeah. you know like a really different band but but yeah. amazing yeah um so what i think is interesting in this and we i think you and i talked about it you know independently uh we didn't ever post a video about it but several weeks ago there was a, one of the judge on the case essentially That's came right. out and said, "Look, this is you guys got to you got to figure this out because um, he kind of alludes to that he's a fan of the band, right? And he's like, you're you know you're not only depriving fans of like this music that everybody's kind of clamoring for, uh, but you're also tarnishing the legacy of the band. So uh, in, in short, get it together." You guys figure this out because this is not going anywhere. Um, and I think most people would agree with them. You know, whether whose side of this you come down on. I don't know a whole lot of people that come down on Vicky Cornell's side. <laughs> right. In yeah. this. But um, I mean, it's it's just good to see it coming to an end. And, you know, well, that's she's a, probably that's... getting a, a chunk of change and. Well, you're, you're, we hope for is that, that everybody's happy, right? I mean, like, no, at no point do you want, like, I, most people don't want to see anyone in pain in this, right? Um, yeah. You know, like, she lost her husband. These guys lost their friend. Um, you know, the best best case scenario for everybody is um, we get some good art out of the deal, and um, they make a little bit of money that, you know, they can maybe, you know, sock away and, and do something nice with. Um yeah. You know, and, and maybe it's the best thing they've made in a long time. You know, let's hope for that. And I, I mean, yeah. with any luck, they put some good producer on it and they get something really nice out of the deal. Well, and one thing that I didn't know prior uh, that I just learned a couple days ago is that Soundgarden are one of the many, many artists that have sold their catalogs. Oh, right. In the last couple of years. Man, this is so, this is so confusing to me, too, right? Like, well, um, there's a really great podcast. There's this, um, he's a Canadian broadcaster and his name is Alan Cross. And, uh, you could probably find the podcast by searching that. Cause I can't remember the name. It's something about the, uh, the history of modern rock and roll or something like that. Okay, cool. And he does a really, really, um, full and complete rundown of like, what what's at stake and basically how and why these catalogs are being sold cool um and the advantages for both legacy acts 
and people like like Justin Bieber and he um he interviews one of the guys from uh it's the it's one of the the main companies that are are buying up these rights right um god i i uh, I wish I could remember the name of it right now. I'm, I'm a terrible, terrible journalist right now. Well, we'll, anyway, we'll swing back. Um, we'll swing back in and maybe do something more specific to this podcast because that sounds interesting. Sure. So anyway, Soundgarden was one of those bands. Yeah. That that came up that has sold off their catalog, um, which you know makes sense. Uh, the idea is that you get you don't get the royalties, which is taxed as income at a much much higher rate than if you sell off. Uh, essentially what is they look at, you know, yearly earnings and go, OK, times 10 times 15, whatever that is. You get it in one lump and then you just pay capital gains tax on it. Uh-huh. And it's a much lower tax rate. So uh, for a lot of these guys, it's it's really beneficial just to take the big check and, you know, right. And it's no sock the money away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that makes sense. And that was our assumption about this, that mm-hmm. there was some sort of gain. And you have to know that, like. There was some, you know, financial guru sitting one day and he came up with this idea and was like, oh, you know, like, because what this really is, right, is hedge funds, right? They become yeah. these, these musical hedge funds, basically. Yeah. So it's a way for, like, um, your 401k to invest in it. Yeah, for sure. And that's what they say is, like, you know, you can take that money and make more money with it, whereas if you're waiting for royalty checks every quarter or whatever it is, you're just getting pounded, like, you know, 37% tax rate or whatever it is at the at the highest bracket so um i wonder though you know it initially in this case it did not seem like vicky cornell was really willing to uh to acquiesce or to even entertain you know offers of settling Um, and i have to wonder ultimately if somehow the public pressure and view of her yeah uh didn't maybe push her in that direction. Well, and that's something we learned, right? I mean, we had our opinion about Vicky Cornell and, and, you know, I mean, um, you know, say what you want about our opinion about it. Like, um, you know, we had our opinion about her and then we put that video out and we learned that we were not in the minority. Right. Yeah. Um, and in fact, it was a, a real, uh, if you guys some go back and look at those comments, a bit more feral. About it. <laughs> yeah. And they have some really kind of, um, uh, uh, developed conspiracy theories about it, right? Yeah, um, yeah. And so, I mean, I think for us, that was the interesting, you know, point that this was a a, a much more um, widely held viewpoint than just us. That she yeah. was kind of after a little bit more than maybe her share. So yeah. I I really think that 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 for sure has a, you know, lawyers have to take that into account because you're often finding these lawsuits in the court of public opinion. Um, mm-hmm. You know, because you're going to get to a jury eventually, um, and so I believe that that definitely played a part in her settling. It had to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody likes to be the bad. I mean, some people do, but by and large, like you know, being social creatures, we don't like to feel like everybody's against us. And that's certainly like if she was not just our video, but like any comment section, <laughs> of any yeah. article or video that's been posted about this case. She is perpetually painted as the villain here. And, uh, well, and honestly, Soundgarden did a good job of, of, of putting stuff out. Like, they initially accused her of using his, you know, that there was that big concert that they held, a memorial for him. And they, yeah. of course, you're going to generate money. There's records that they made of it. And they initially accused her of using that for her personal gain. Right. They since, like, pulled that, that lawsuit but the damage was done, right? You know, you say that yeah. in public and everybody's like, oh, she's doing this, she's doing that. You know, like, they don't need to actually convict her of it. That, you know, the damage was done. So I think, you know, they did a good job of painting her that way too. Yeah, and I think, you know, they were smart in that, like, you would be hard-pressed to find um, video of Kim Thale or anybody else in the band, like, disparaging her directly Absolutely. or even talking about the case. Like, they just kind of let their legal people handle all that and, and stayed out of the fray and just kind of stayed in this bubble. And, you know, the fans were like, yeah, that's, of course I'm on. Exactly. Start. She's already out in public saying all this stuff. Let her kind of sink her own boat. And I think, you know, core public opinion, I think they saw that they were in the, they're the win. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, We'll, we'll wrap this one up, but I, I'm curious. Did you see the um, 
the little video snippet that I sent you of Chris talking about his early courtship with I, her. I did, I did, and you're 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 100 percent right. But like, so uh, Jason sent this video of Chris Cornell talking about first meeting his wife, and you know it's really it's really gushy. You know he talks about meeting her and falling in love very quick, very quickly and moving in together very quickly. And, you know, she picked out an apartment right away because they're hard to find in Paris. I met my wife in Paris and she, she lived with her mother and her brother in an apartment. And I was touring with Audio Slave. Anytime I had any break at all, I would fly back to Paris, see her, and I would stay at a hotel. And, you know, we did everything proper. And the, we, we planned to get married and, and have kids right away. Um, and one of the visits, we had, we had already talked about living in Paris. I come and see her, and she says, I wanted to show you something. So she takes me one flight of stairs up from the apartment and opens the door, and there's an empty apartment. And it's very difficult to rent apartments in Paris. And she said, I don't know, it's for rent. Maybe we should rent it. What, what do you think? And I thought it was a great idea. And, and it was the kind of thing where if you're, like, love struck guy with him, you're like, yeah, man, oh, that's great. But if you're, like, his buddy or his friend and you're listening to him, you're like, oh, hold on, bro. Hold on. Yeah. No, 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 You're like, oh, God, red flags <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I'll, I'll, post, I'll post that so people can see it. But um, I, I don't know. I'm glad this worked out the way it did. I'm glad we're sure. going to get to uh, hear some new Soundgarden stuff regardless of, you know, what, where we kind of appraise it in, in the, the rest of the catalog. Um, it's just, like you said, good to see that this is coming to an end, and it seems that everybody at least, you know, kind of got what they wanted to have compromised to make this happen. So yeah, absolutely. Kudos to everybody involved in that respect. For sure. The fans um, win, most of all. Indeed. So uh, thank you all very much for checking us out. We, we absolutely. appreciate it. Uh, stop by, drop a comment, let us know what you think. Um, you know, don't be too mean about it, but you know, this topic <laughs> tends to bring out the crazies for whatever reason, man. Um, anyway, love you all. Take care. We'll see you next time. Have a good day, guys.